Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and uh, today I have a couple of beauties on my bench. This is not one, but actually two Texas Instruments TI-99 4A. In this video I'm gonna explore these two machines. I never had a Texas Instruments uh, machine before. Uh, I made one video last year about the TI-99 4A that I had on loan that I fixed up for uh, my friend uh, Koiro, but uh, now I actually got two on my own. And uh, as you can see, they are... Uh, Similar, but uh, still a little bit different. This might become a multi-part uh, video. Uh, I'm gonna do the regular stuff, uh, recapping and uh, cleaning and all those things. And uh, I'm also gonna build a power supply because uh, one of these machines is missing its power supply. And also I'm gonna explore uh, the Nano PEB. I also thought I'm just gonna mention that uh, during the summer months I probably will not uh, release a video every week because uh, summer is time for outdoors here in Norway and uh, I have a one month vacation and also uh, I have a lot of uh, things to do at my daytime work uh, now at the springtime because we have uh, always some major milestones and releases uh, so I'll be pretty busy at work. All right, uh, let's get started. And uh, I will start by taking a look at the two machines. And uh, they are the same model. However, they look uh, quite different. Uh, this one is uh, plastic, a little bit yellow might be. And this one has metal finish. And the keyboard is a little bit different. This one... This key here says function and this says control and uh, yeah <laughs> and it's the opposite this one says control and this function maybe someone swapped them sometime power switch this one uh, has the power switch in the front and it it's quite uh, stuck hard to <laughs> turn however this one has uh, a little bit easier to turn a power switch there. The back sides of the machines is uh, quite similar. Uh, same uh, port here for cassette and uh, yeah, power supply input. And uh, this is the video output port. On the side there is a, a joystick port and on this side uh, some expansion port which is the same on uh, both variants. And in the front you have this uh, cartridge port and uh, this machine, as you can see, already got the cartridge. It's uh, Car Wars. So we're gonna take a look at that uh, later. Personally, I think these uh, machines uh, look great for uh, microcomputers. They were produced in uh, 1981 and they were the successor after the TI 994. I don't think the Texas Instruments computers were popular in Norway back in the day. I never heard about anyone had one, but uh, maybe I haven't checked. <laughs> But uh, these machines, I actually got them both as donations. And um, this one I got from my friend Koiro. And I would uh, highly recommend you check out his own channel. Uh, he has a retro computer channel too. Uh, it's called uh, Koiro Retro Innovations. I'll link to that in the description. And this one I actually got as a donation all the way from the United States. And, uh, I got it from Patrick and it actually turns out that he too has a YouTube channel and it's called Dinty's Hideaway and 
among uh, other things. He has a little bit of a history about uh, Texas Instruments computers, so you should really check out his channel too. So why are there two different variants of the same model? Well, it's uh, as simple as uh, this was uh, the first release and uh, this uh, was uh, later cost reduced release. And pretty soon we will see the difference inside them because I'm gonna open both. But first let's power them on and uh, I actually know that this one is working because I have tested it before but this one is completely unknown state so I don't know. First let's power on this one and uh, since I got this from the United States it actually has a US 110 volts uh, power supply and here in Norway we use 240 and um, yeah, because of that I need a step down converter. And this uh, power plug is uh, quite uh, special. <laughs> I have never seen this uh, simple variant before, but uh, yeah. And what about the video output? Uh, this one only has uh, this uh, composite video uh, it's like this uh, five pin uh, no six pin din plug and uh, nothing else no rf modulator so um, i just checked and it turns out that this is the exact same uh, variant as the commodore wic 20 and i of course have a cable that uh, fits and here's the cable it's um, yeah this is a 5 pin DIN, so the middle pin is not in use and it's just regular um, composite uh, video and audio. So I just uh, plug it in and then just connect it to my TV. And I have this uh, SCART adapter. All right, we're good to go. Let's see if it turns on. All right, yeah, that's it. That's the familiar uh, startup screen of uh, the Texas Instruments uh, machine. And uh, let's just press any key to begin. I know it actually has two choices, one for the built-in basic and two for Car Wars, uh, the cartridge inside. So that machine works, we know that, and uh, now it's time for this one, which is uh, the unknown one. Hopefully it works too. What? 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 <laughs> it actually has a different... Uh, video output I didn't notice before but uh, yeah this is as I showed you before it's uh, the six pin DIN connector while uh, this one has uh, the five pin which is the <laughs> the one I actually have the cable for oh no <laughs> I just realized uh, <laughs> There's a reason there's a difference and the American one has um, NTSC uh, of course and um, has a 5 pin DIN with a composite video signal and uh, the European PAL version uh, actually has a 6 pin DIN and it is a component signal. And the reason I got confused was because I actually uh, uh, had one of uh, these black and silver ones before and that actually had a 5-pin composite uh, video output and uh, that was obviously an NTSC machine too. Well, I don't have a cable for this actually so um, I'm gonna need to make one and uh, another thing is that uh, this TV does not have a component signal input so uh, I need to find a solution for that. I already ordered a component to HDMI, a little uh, dongle uh, that's gonna arrive in a couple of days. But first I need to make a little cable and um, yeah, I uh, already got the six pin uh, DIN connector, so uh, not an issue there. 
Here's uh, one of many <laughs> different um, pinouts I found uh, online and uh, here we can see the solar side and uh, pin 2 is uh, the luma signal and pin 3 is the red minus the luma and pin 4 is the blue minus the luma and pin 5 is sound and pin 6 is ground. I'm not going to try to force uh, five different uh, RCA cables um, to this little uh, <laughs> DIN connector, so I'm going to solder on some wires that I can uh, connect to afterwards. So let's see if we can quickly solder this without too much trouble. I don't like soldering uh, DIN connectors. There's uh, a big risk of uh, damaging the contact and uh, it's very small and fiddly, but uh, yeah. I figured this method might work. <laughs> the thing is if you use too much uh, dwell time uh, you actually risk melting the contact, the plastic around the pins. So. Nope. That's better. Fill it up. Finally the ground wire in the middle. So that went really smooth. I think that's uh, the best uh, DIN connector soldering job I ever done. So that's uh, one end of uh, the wire, so uh, now we are ready to connect the rest. So I'm just eager to test if uh, this machine actually works. So I uh, connected only the Luma signal and the ground to uh, a cable that goes to the composite input. Uh, and uh, now I'm just gonna test. It should give some kind of picture, but uh, without the colors. So let's see what we get. <laughs> All right, there's a picture. <laughs> it's uh, very uh, dim, <laughs> but I clearly see Texas Instruments and uh, press any key to begin. So, uh, well, this machine is working. <laughs> so now I'm gonna continue and make this uh, cable. Uh, so this is the temporary cable. Uh, it's not the correct colors for um, the component uh, type cable. And also I'm uh, ignoring um, the audio, I'm just gonna leave this lead here for now and uh, <laughs> the soldering job was probably not the best but I think this will be okay. And I will probably just order a real uh, professional uh, cable instead of this one later. The cable is finished and uh, my small TV doesn't have a component input so I have hooked up everything to uh, this uh, big TV and uh, that one actually has a component input so let's see about that. Um, problem is that um, this mode the TV actually uh, says unknown format so uh, yeah I'm not really sure why maybe it's an incompatible signal with this uh, newer type of televisions I don't know. The thing is if I connect the, the Luma uh, signal to uh, the regular uh, composite video input then I actually get a decent uh, picture of course without the colors. Enough with the video cable, I know this machine is working and I'm happy about that. I will resolve uh, the video issue later. I uh, am uh, gonna wait for um, the little converter uh, from uh, component to HDMI, see if that works. 
So now it's time to open up the machines and uh, see how they differ inside. I'm gonna open the PAL machine first and it has uh, seven screws uh, on the underside. On this machine you lift up the underside. <laughs> but there's a trick to this um, uh, power button as I might remember. <laughs> Not really sure. No, oh, it just came straight up. Yeah, nothing broken. Yeah, looks okay on the inside. Uh, obviously, a little uh, dusty. Inside of the cover is dusty. Opening the other machine same number and the placement of uh, the screws all right that's the inside of both of the machines and uh, yeah there's differences but uh, on the whole part they, they are similar power supply is here and uh, as we can see this keyboard uh, backplate is different from this one but besides the PCB um, the keyboards actually do look identical uh, I'm gonna remove the keyboards and we can uh, take a closer look uh, here's also <laughs> some dust and uh, yeah let's see some um, American uh, crap coming out <laughs> the power supplies are uh, almost identical there's a few differences and uh, it has the same uh, serial number 1049689-3c and this one has dash 3 okay let's uh, disassemble the machines more Luckily all the screws up until now seems to be the same kind and uh, length, so well <laughs> uh, These one are the same kind but not the same length a shorter one there So now this just uh, lifts away and uh, yeah There's the power board so this machine takes input uh, from an external power supply um, here's a closer look at the power supply the internal one uh, this one gets uh, ac voltages from um, the external uh, transformer and the external transformer uh, says it has uh, 18 volts ac and seven and a half volts ac and uh, the AC input gets converted by this power supply to uh, plus and minus 5 volts and uh, plus 12 volts if I remember correctly. The inside of the power switch uh, looks like this on the white one but uh, on the other side on the black one it uh, is a little different uh, mechanism but uh, the actual power switch is uh, on the same place the black one has an external power LED uh, however the white one does not but uh, it has a power LED but it is bent inwards <laughs> so now we can remove the power supply and uh, actually disconnect uh, the connector to the motherboard next item to come off is uh, the keyboard and there's uh, two four six seven eight nine screws <laughs> and the keyboard on uh, the pal machine has even more screws i think it's uh, 13 on this one so uh, yeah that makes the keyboard uh, more sturdy i guess and uh, more expensive <laughs> So I guess the correct order is to remove uh, the actual motherboard uh, before the keyboard and uh, 
even though it's loose, it's uh, still stuck underneath. And this massive uh, shield, it's uh, ridiculous. So uh, this is a very <laughs> complex design, I guess. And uh, yeah, that must have driven the cost up uh, considerably. So I think these are screws with the bolts that goes right through to the other side <laughs> of the shield. There's a, a similar shield on the other side of uh, this motherboard. So that's only three screws holding uh, the motherboard and uh, now it is free from the case. Now that the plastic is freed up, I can take this uh, downstairs and clean them up. Both the keyboards look the same, uh, besides the colors, but uh, this one looks to be made in uh, more cheaper materials than this one. And the keycaps, you just pull them right up, and on this one, everyone is loose. I need no force to lift them, but on this one you need a little bit force to lift them. <laughs> um, and the sound is different. So definitely this uh, feels better to the touch, but it depends when you actually type uh, how good they work so i'm just gonna pull off the connector for uh, the keyboard and uh, the keys are okay not dirty at all so i don't think i'm gonna clean those this one looks a little bit more dirty so i might uh, rinse them off um, at least there's some dust and stuff between the two motherboards side by side and uh, they look uh, quite similar, a uh, little bit different color on the PCB uh, and here's the bolts that actually have uh, nuts and on one side and the bolt goes right through to the other side <laughs> really uh, annoying <laughs> design so let's see if we can actually manage to uh, remove uh, this shield So this is the expansion port and uh, you just pull it right up. <laughs> oh, there's a difference. Uh, this one has, uh, yeah, I don't know what you call this, some extra metal protection. <laughs> A little bit of a rust here, not much at all. I think this is the worst machine I have ever uh, opened when it comes to, <laughs> to uh, disassembling it. <laughs> well, except for um, the Macintosh, the old Mac, uh, Macintosh classics. <laughs> Finally. The motherboards uh, side by side in their glory and uh, there's not much uh, difference here. Um, what can I say? The, this is the CPU and uh, yeah, if you check the date codes on uh, some chips, this is 8301. Uh, and this actually too, 8301. Let's see on this one, 8311 and here's 8248. So this board one, uh, the cost reduce has uh, newer chips, of course. <laughs> and this is the TMS9900 CPU. That's actually a 16-bit uh, CPU. Yeah, it says uh, Philippines on this one, 8306. And uh, this one has uh, very small writing. I need to take my goggles on. Uh, 
this one says uh, 8316 and uh, Korea looks like exactly the same uh, layout of um, the traces and the whole PCB all the components are exactly the same except for some color differences but uh, that's normal different colored uh, different brands of uh, electrolyte capacitors <laughs> Even though the CPU is a 16-bit CPU, it can only address uh, 8 bits of RAM at a time and uh, <laughs> that's a little bit uh, strange uh, design. Um, it has like a 16-bit side and an 8-bit side and uh, everything between needs to go to some complex uh, logic. The CPU actually has its own small 256 bytes uh, RAM uh, that it can use, but um, everything else goes uh, on the data bus as 8-bit. And the sound and the video chips on these uh, machines are also Texas Instruments uh, custom chips. All right, that was the teardown of the machines. Uh, now it's time to do some cleaning. The keyboard has been cleaned and the keycaps also and uh, as we now can see there is a difference on the keyboard, the plastic plates. Um, this one for the black and metal machine seems to be much more sturdier and solid built and this one for the cost reduced you see uh, it's all hollow around uh, the keys and uh, yeah, much thinner plastic. Uh, So I want to recap uh, both the machines and I have actually um, picked out all the electrolyte capacitors uh, from DigiKey and uh, I found everyone except a 4.7 uh, microfarad uh, axial so I order a radial instead maybe that will fit and also I'm gonna order these um, uh, voltage regulators that are actually uh, DC to DC converters and uh, they run cold instead of the original old 7812 uh, regulators that uh, needs big heatsink. So I'm gonna order this now and hopefully it will uh, arrive in time. 
DigiKey is uh, usually very quick if they have everything in store. All the keycaps uh, turn out uh, very nice and clean and shiny and I'm ready to assemble uh, both the keyboards. All right, so next is uh, cleaning the motherboards and uh, even though they uh, look quite all right, uh, there's always some dirt and uh, yeah, it's best to get it off. As you can see, quite uh, <laughs> black and uh, yeah. I'm gonna clean the whole board. Also gonna remove this old uh, thermal paste it's dried up almost. Last step now is to use a little bit of electronic cleaner on all the contacts and uh, then afterwards these boards are ready to be recapped. Of course I must not forget to clean uh, the power supply board. So I just use the same process there. Uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, a lot of uh, these Q-tips. <laughs> So this uh, is of course strictly not necessary because uh, they're not that dirty and uh, there's no danger in uh, any damage or anything. But uh, I like to do it uh, if I want the machine to uh, present itself as new then uh, everything must be clean. And uh, it's not a lot of work either, you do the cleaning in 10-15 uh, yeah, minutes or less. <laughs> so here you can see on the cost reduced model uh, the LED is uh, missing but it's there it's just bent inwards. <laughs> on the black and metal uh, machine the power switch is uh, quite hard uh, so I'm gonna clean it up with some uh, Electronic cleaner. Just clean both. Just turn it on and off several times so that the cleaner is distributed on the contacts. And this switch actually feels <laughs> cheaper. It doesn't have the same sound as this. All right, that was the walkthrough of the differences of the two machines and uh, the cleaning and uh, stuff like that. Uh, both are now ready for uh, getting some new electrolyte uh, capacitors and uh, also to be assembled and uh, played a little bit with. So I call it, uh, this is episode one and um, then I hope you stay tuned for the next episode that will bring some, uh, perhaps some software solutions, some. Uh, games and uh, yeah perhaps a new power supply we'll see so thanks for watching and thanks a lot to my patreons that support this channel thanks bye bye